Today, I'm going to be taking a look at one of the most maligned sequences in Sam Raimi's Spider-Man trilogy. The scene in question is none other than the third film's infamous strut montage, a scene that I've always thought got a worse rep than it deserves. I'm not going to pretend it's the apex of cinema or anything, but I've always felt that the frustration aimed towards it was fairly unwarranted, especially when you view it in the context of the trilogy as a whole. I don't think anything I'm about to say is earth-shattering by any stretch of the word, but it's something that was on my mind earlier that I thought might be interesting to share. First, let's look at the scene within the narrative of its own film. Just before the scene rolls around, Peter Parker outs Eddie Brock as a plagiarist, photoshopping older photos of Spider-Man to feature his new black suit. Because Parker happens to be wearing the aforementioned suit, he does so in a brash, id-driven rage. The montage then starts and expands on this idea, showing how the symbiote affects our protagonist's mental state. We see that it sends our hero's ego out of control, to the point of him being as cringeworthy as a Casanova at Homecoming, which, despite being everyone's gripe with the scene, is kind of the point. We're supposed to hate what we're watching, and we're supposed to laugh at Peter Parker's attempts to be a badass, because he's anything but. So the scene is effective, albeit clunky when it's viewed within the context of Spider-Man 3. But what about when you pair it alongside its companion films? Both of those movies also happen to feature montage sequences that make use of Raimi's comedic stylings. In fact, if you ask me, Raimi's use of humor in each of these montages is actually pretty genius because he's effectively using a similar variety of jokes in order to tell us different things. The montages in the first two films may have received a warmer reception than the third one, but I don't honestly think they're that much better than what we got there. In fact, they all serve a similar purpose. They're essentially the logline for each story. Spider-Man 1's montage was the first time we actually saw Parker don the fabled spandex. It was his public unveiling and as such was extremely heroic with its quick cuts and high angles. Raimi's sense of humor is used really well here because it helps the audience believe in the idea of a superhero, similar to how Superman flying in his first movie was imperative to people buying into the world. It allows for the setting Spider-Man inhabits to act less like reality and more like a comic book, which makes our protagonist feel like he belongs there and perfectly defines that first movie. It's about Peter Parker entering a new world and finding out what his calling is, that he has a great gift and it's his duty to use it. With Spider-Man 2, we shift gears a bit. The montage isn't about being a hero, but rather Peter Parker's transition into normalcy. The visual style of the first montage is swapped out for longer takes and camera placement that's level to our protagonist because he's just like us now. And the humor reflects this. There's a gag where Peter Parker is spinning a wheel and it flies out the window. When a pedestrian starts yelling at him from the street, he dons a pose that's similar to the kind of positions he found himself in as Spider-Man. It's a reminder that old habits die hard and that Peter Parker will always be Spider-Man. Overall, the montage is a lot of fun like the first one, but it's done in a much dorkier way. If the first montage showed us that Spider-Man fits in with the world, I think the second one is about how Peter Parker, the human being, doesn't tonally match up with them and that his happiness comes at the cost of the city's safety. It's a reminder that Spider-Man has responsibilities and that they'll inevitably get in the way of his personal life. This brings us back to Spider-Man 3, which I view as the cynical cousin of the first two montages. We see Peter Parker transform into an egomaniac, but it's in a way that's entirely his own. He's less James Dean and more the character's approximation of him. If the first film was about becoming a hero, and the second one was about the things a hero should keep in mind, Spider-Man 3 could be seen as a look at the things a hero should never succumb to. I think the montage gets this across really well in its last shot, which is a low angle that forces us to look up at Peter Parker. The cinematography is telling us that our protagonist thinks he's better than us and that he wants us to revere him as some sort of god, but when the shot's coupled with the way he acts leading up to it, the response we have as viewers is the exact opposite. It's simple reverse psychology. Raimi's telling us to think something when in actuality he wants us to think about its inverse. This is, like I said earlier, simultaneously why some people may hate this scene, as well as why I think it works so well. Raimi clearly wanted us to hate, or at least dislike, Spider-Man at this point of the film. His sense of humor is undeniably present, but the tone behind it's different. 
The typically mindful Peter Parker, a guy who's always putting others before himself, is suddenly a huge dick to everyone around him. What's worse is he's none the wiser that he's being manipulated to act this way. When you play these three montages together with this in mind, you get what I kinda see as a three-part thesis on what it means to be a hero. You watch a person recognize his responsibilities, refuse his own happiness for the greater good, and you see why it's important for this person to stay humble. I can easily be overthinking these things, but it's something that definitely intrigues me. I love trying to ascertain higher meaning from media. It's why I love film and literature so much, and if it can help justify what would otherwise be an especially bad scene in an already flawed movie, then that's great. And if it doesn't, at least it was a fun way to flex my pretentiousness, I guess. The original Spider-Man trilogy had a huge impact on my childhood. I saw each of these films on opening day and distinctly remember something from each initial viewing. For me, they're a tough act to follow, but one I hope gets surpassed by this next film. And even if I walk out of Spider-Man Homecoming having only just liked it, that's fine too. Either way, the greatest Spider-Man moment will continue to be... That's right, Peter. I'm you, and you're me, and this is a god. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I'd love to hear what you think about my interpretation of the scene, as well as what your favorite part in the original trilogy was. Feel free to check out some of my other videos, as well as follow me on social media, and as always, have a great day!